Here I am at the Beach Cafe, near where I'm staying, in Negambo. Very lovely place. So, in Mandukya Upanishad, the karaka, or commentary, is talking about Aslesya Yoga. Aslesha means no contact, no relationship. So it's a little bit of an oxymoron because yoga etymologically means connection or contact, whereas aslesha means the opposite. But here, the meaning of yoga is in its broader sense as a method of self-realization. So there's really no contradiction in that terms. But Aslesya refers to Brahman, which is completely self-contained. Brahman doesn't really come in touch with anything else. There are many reasons for this. I guess the most... Uh, salient one is that everything else besides Brahman is Maya. <laughs> it doesn't really exist. It's just an appearance. Only Maya is the various objects in the world, the different individuals that appear to exist, the different activities and qualities, uh, time, and so many other things that require duality. This duality is foreign to Brahman. There is no duality in Brahman. Hence, Brahman has no relationship with anything else because from the point of view of Brahman, there isn't anything else. <laughs> it's kind of a strange thing for those who are conditioned by material consciousness. But it's absolutely straightforward for those who have actually realized Brahman. So, anyway, we've been discussing this in many previous episodes of this series. And what I want to do now is bring out the practice of Aslesha Yoga which is uh, what is recommended by Shankaracharya in his commentary on the Karaka. <clears throat> so, Aslesha Yoga is a specific technique within the general range of Jnana Yoga. And Jnana Yoga, of course, is realization of non-duality. It's not really about meditation, because meditation implies an object. And in Brahman, there are no objects. There's only the subject, the self with a capital S, the reality with a capital R. So the practice of Aslesha Yoga means staying within the purview of Brahman only and not going out and conceiving of relationships or relatedness with anything else. So it's like I said, it's not really a meditation, but rather the cultivation of a state of mind, a state of mind that is not in relation with anything. It's easier to give negative examples than positive examples. For example, we are used to considering that the body is the self. When we say or think about the word I, 
the concept of self, we generally refer to the body and mind, the senses, and the environment that we are in. But, of course, this has absolutely no relationship with Brahman. So, when we think of I, the self, or our beingness, in Aslesha Yoga, we don't think, we specifically don't think of the body, mind, senses, and the world. We specifically think of only the self being aware of itself. This is called objectless awareness because it has no object or subject different from itself. It is without a topic. Buddha called it themeless concentration. But even concentration is not really applicable to this state because in concentration, one tries to willfully focus the mind on one particular object at the exclusion of everything else. But in Aslesha Yoga, there is no such effort. The only effort is if the mind becomes conditioned or related to or with something other than Brahman, to bring it back into the state of tranquility where it has no relationship with anything else. So this might seem a little strange at first, that one can sit, for example, on the beach at a cafe waiting for the cappuccino <laughs> and practice this yoga, Aslesha yoga. But actually, it's easy because when you realize that the body is not the self, the mind is not the self, the senses and their objects are not the self. In fact, there is no other object except the self. And because the self is aware of the self, it's not really considered an object. It's all subject. Subject means the one who is aware. The self, I the being. So, in other words, Aslesha Yoga can be practiced in any condition of external life or any state of external consciousness, whether awake, asleep, dreaming, deep sleep, or whatever. Because this Aslesha, the whole meaning of the word, is that the self is not really related with anything else. And everything else that appears to exist is simply maya, illusion. It's the snake, and the rope is the self, Brahman, the reality. So I hope this short little video can shed some life on this practice, because it is really the ultimate practice. This is why, for example, great saints like Ramana Maharshi, although they're fully realized in Brahman, still maintain relationships or apparent relationships and activities, apparent activities, <laughs> and act for the benefit of others out of compassion and so forth. Because it's like Zen, while walking, he remains in one place. While speaking, he's actually silent. Oh, it's everything. Oh, thank you, dear. So it's like Zen. It's non-doing, but it appears to look like doing, like an ordinary person. But actually, because the mind is completely fixed on the self, Atman, there is no doing, there is no acting, there is no actor, because there is no ego. This is the highest state, and this is what we can reach by studying and practicing the Mandukya Upanishad. So I just wanted to say a little more, that 
Enlightenment should not be exclusive. In other words, it shouldn't be like a rejection. Maybe that's necessary in some of the lower stages of the path when you're trying to establish a first uh, spiritual consciousness. You have to follow some rules and regulations or do some regulated sadhana. But in these higher levels of the path, um, it becomes inclusive. In other words, I don't feel like chasing away the dog sleeping at the foot of the table. <laughs> I don't feel like the crows or the radio or anything is an interruption because I'm not trying to exclude them from my consciousness. I can accept them. I can even embrace them because I know that they are illusions because they seem to be something separate from myself. See, this is the key. Knowing this and seeing that way and then thinking through it and basing one's attitudes and actions on that insight is the essence of this yoga, a slesha yoga. Not that we have any pre-programmed idea what to do, what not to do, and all that. That's kid stuff, beginner level. But that we accept life as it is because we don't identify with any of it and we're not attached to any of it. So it's all good. It's all beautiful. And one can enjoy un uninterruptedly because there's nothing that is to be rejected. The only thing that we do, we discriminate against is attachment and identification. And maybe some projection too. <laughs> These attributes or functions of the mind that drag us into illusion, thinking I am this, I am that, this is mine. I am the so-and-so, you know, CEO of XYZ Corporation or whatever. Uh, or I am a citizen of this country or I belong to this religion or that spiritual path or whatever. These are all identifications. These are all attachments. This is mine. That is yours. And, and so on. We stay away from those kind of thoughts and also from projecting our ideas of relatedness on a world that actually doesn't recognize it, that actually isn't a part of that. See, this is the sickness of the mind. This is what is called in Shiva Purana, a perversion of the mind, that, or mental aberration, that we project our ideas, especially our desires, on the world, and then we judge good or bad, yes or no, pleasant or unpleasant, in relation to those desires. So this is actually a distorted frame of mind, which leads to suffering. Because of course, the, the world has no obligation to conform to our desires. <laughs> so by simply accepting everything, but not identifying with it, one can simply enjoy the beauty of life without any disturbance. And this is called tranquility, because in any condition of life, in any situation, in any environment, one can experience peace of mind. What is that worth? I'll give you everything I got just for a little peace of mind. Huh? George Harrison. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. 